we're out at Pelican Point. We're patrolling the beaches, looking for entangled seals. We stop, scan with binoculars, drive from group to group. It's quite uh, time consuming, but um, it's the only way we can really try and cover as much as possible. It's a line on the beach. It's probably washed up or been brought in by a different seals. It's not attached to anything. You see the seal pups playing with this ball of line, and uh, this is how the entanglements happen. They're very playful animals by nature, and they go and they play around, they roll around, and they start moving, slip into a little loop. The loop gets around them, gets tighter and tighter, and how it ends up getting them. Uh. The ball of snook line, something getting way too often. This line looks quite old already. Probably picked it up on the beach, but still a problem. Luckily, it's probably picked it up quite quickly. It's not, it uh, wasn't major damage yet, but it was really tight. Would have started cutting into him really soon. Run in by hand, maybe you follow with a yeah. net just in case it's a bit bigger than we plan. You should see. He's lying on his head, his head's just popping up now behind the one that's sleeping, the silver one. So you see all the weird whiting around his neck. Um, I'm going to go in by hand. Huh? I'm going to take his head right out. Completely after we cut her loose. Definitely some sort of plastic bag. Could just be the, the like the handle of a normal shopping bag, but it was pushing in quite deep. I don't know if it would have cut, but it would have definitely been very uncomfortable. Maybe even caused some damage at a later stage. So I'm sure it's very happy to be rid of that. Bigger one here, so that he needs a net. So I'm probably going to charge for the smaller one. So only we'll have it. We're going to go with walk with the binoculars, check on this one. If it looks like a capture or seal, then we're going to have to. Tony will run off, get in the net, put in the net, come out, leave, come back get the other one, and then we'll 
just have to see what the third one is. that big one to the left. You just see a loop of oh, lines yeah, sticking yeah. out now. It's actually a lot more attached to that. Such a thin piece of line causing so much damage. It's completely cut open. And we're lucky that it actually looks quite clean. But uh, so much unnecessary damage by such a little piece of line. So we didn't actually catch either of the first two that we set out for. Uh, the plan was for one on the snow line, one on the packing strap. Both of them missed us in the group, but we saw this one amongst the others running through, so at least we got something out of it. The one we, we saw this morning with a green, he had a big green net around his neck. Um, but it was very skittish this morning, he ran into the water before we could even start going for him. So we're getting ready now already. And uh, if we see him, we can just sort of drop and go. Very close. Big uh, green troll in it. But hopefully we'll get him soon. It was right around his face, but I didn't see it going through his mouth. The fresh entanglement won't be hurting him too much yet, so hopefully we do still have a few days. So um, yeah, it was uh, successful in the sense we caught five seals, but the time, same time we also missed probably another five. It's not always that easy, especially at the moment. It's very sunny and the seals are close to the water. Um, so it's always a 50-50 if we're actually going to get them or not. Um, there were two in particular that we missed. We were a bit bummed about, but five is still a really good number. The one or two with really bad injuries, so very good that we got them in time. Otherwise, all in all, actually quite an average day for us here. The problem is real. It's just way too much plastic in the water, way too much discarded fishing waste. So we need to be better about uh, what we do with our waste. Let's try again tomorrow.